What a pleasure it is to see you in person here. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's good to be here, man. 30 broken bones, more so, right? 38. Yeah, 38. Who's, but who's, count, count, who's counting? Who's counting? Who's counting? <laughs> Multiple surgeries. Yeah. Uh, Mayor of Kingston has a great show, super intense, right? Yeah. Shows like this have a heightened reality, but your life as you were actually living it was mm. a heightened reality. I mean, yeah, yeah. Act, yes. Yeah, yeah. How do you toggle, how do you How do you then act when the thing you're living, the real world, is so <laughs> intense? That's a good question. It was, it was kind of, that was, the, that was the, the, the part of it where it's kind of hard to get back to, to work in the way of like, I'm gonna go do fiction <laughs> and these fake, fake words right. and fake stories of fake people. I'm like, what am I doing? I gotta worry about these yeah. legs and these, yeah. the reality of, of my life. So, but, but I also, you know, I, I, I had to convince myself and change my perspective that, that I was going to heal myself by, by going back to work and, and I can't just run from, yeah. I can't just be in my pain and recovery all the time, right? Yeah. So I have to go live life. And, um, so it really did help by, by going back to work. Even though it was very fragile and touch and go the first few weeks, it was not good. And, and we want to get to the show in a bit, but I want to yeah, stay right here in this pocket. Yes. And by no means am I saying any of the injuries I've had in the past playing sports compare to what you mm. have been through. But I do know once you go through the procedures, yeah. even though you have your family, yeah. there is this solitude that is sobering. Yeah. And it's very lonely. It's yeah. dark. Yeah and sometimes depression and mental health issues set sure, in. Sure. Then you get back in the locker room and you're like, feels good to right. be out amongst my peers. Right. Did you feel that once you came out of the other side and you were sitting there with your peers on the set? Was that a little bit of a relief? Um, I don't know, maybe because this doesn't typically require a physical thing. You know, there's a, there, that camaraderie, I guess, in a locker room, you'd have that. That's you're true, doing, yeah. You're doing something physical together as a team. We do, like, <laughs> actory things, right? It's kind of a more <laughs> emotional things. But there is that the support is support, right? But there's still loneliness, like you said, in the support. Like an injury, whatever, it's, you might have a lot of love and support around you and people helping you and doctors and family, and right? But it's still, you're the only one hurt. Mm. You're the only one that's got to get through it. You're the only one in the pain, and just like I was. Yeah. Right? I had a lot of love, right? I lean on that. But I also had to lean on my own um, tenacity, my own sort of will yeah because i can either change my perspective and be in pain or just shift my perception and make this about power and I, I have a different relationship with pain wow and that had to do with yelling at my leg that's all metal now it's like it's telling me it's broken i'm like literally talking to my leg I'm like no no you're not you're not you're in pain yeah like i had to switch it off in my brain like this pain is just a construct in our brain anyway wow so i really had to dig deep into what pain is yes. mm. wow so I, it's just a notification center now it, for yeah. me, it's just like, oh, let's swipe and delete it. Yeah. Um, were, wow. were you treated differently when you came back? Because I know people were so glad to see you. Do you think people? Yeah, were I think there's. I think there's a lot of people. Nobody. I didn't see anybody until till then from the from the from the since the accident. Yeah. A lot of people didn't know exactly what transpired. Um, some people did. People were very uh, delicate. If I wanted to talk about it, I just go. I'm free to talk about it. It's no big deal. But no one's. No one's coming up and asking how you're doing. You know, not yeah. in that yeah. sense. They were, I think they're kind of afraid. And I might get that, right? You know? I know, but Jeremy, it's so interesting because everybody has said that when you came in, I was, oh, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're okay. Everybody that sees you feels that way about you. And I wonder if that gets exhausting after a while where everybody everybody is so happy that you are with us. Uh, you know, How you handle all that incoming this is, this of... Is, this yeah. is confirmation of like this. We're all part of a collective. Yeah. The collective of where, where goodness of people and kindness of people. It's like I survived because of a lot of people and the goodwill of a lot of people. Now, yeah. it was me, it was my, my family, my mother, my daughters, a lot of people, but also people I didn't know around the planet. Yeah. Mm. And that collective goodness uh, is felt, it's exchanged, and it's, it's forever. And it's, it's powerful. Yeah, yeah, it's very Have powerful. You seen and, any... it, and it made me survive. Have you seen any humor in it? Uh, yeah, I think humor was, you know, even in the ICUs uh, when it was really dire, was always a way, way, it was a way for me to find sobriety in it, to find normalcy in it, and not, you, you can shift your perspective when you find humor in things. And even if it isn't that funny, um, at least it, it's the, the attempt at, at changing your perception of like, yeah. 
being a victim or victimizing something to like, you know, let's it's, just make the best of this somehow, some way. Always trying to find a joke or, I mean, yeah. there were pretty dark jokes in the ICU. They're like, yeah. well, hey, can I do anything more for you, Mr. Rohn? I'm like, yeah, find me a tall bridge to go <laughs> off and whatever it was. Well, we can you say know. Mike McCluskey is still a tough yes. character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he hasn't changed. But now I don't know. See, that's the thing. Um, you know, mm. coming back into it, it's it's made, I feel like I've made him more delicate. More delicate. Because I think I am. In the episode I saw, he was still tough. Was he? I, okay, yeah. good. As but, long but, as he looks tough, that's all no, that but matters. Tell, tell me about that. I'm curious. <laughs> you made him more delicate. What do you mean? Well, it also worked just because in the narrative of the show, without giving away too much, of something bad that happens. So yes. it's pretty vulnerable for, because there's a loss. And yes. he has to deal with that. A surprising and loss. I was personally dealing with a lot of those type of feelings anyway. So yeah. it just kind of worked where what was happening in my life was mm -hmm. kind of congruent with what was happening in Mike McCluskey's life. And it kind of bleeds in throughout the series, too. It's yeah. very layered. Um, and you wear multiple hats, not just uh, the main attraction, but also executive producer. And this show tackles tough topics, corruption, yeah. racism, mass yeah. incarceration. Yep. Um, you know, what is it like to bring those real life elements to a show that really depicts this city in a way that is accurate? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's it's great because the, we're, I think I love where Mike stands has a place in it all, right? There, there's, there's such a unifying sort of perspective that he has and yeah. holds the ground as mayor. The mayor obviously is not the mayor. He just has connections with any yeah. race, color, creed, doesn't matter. He's, he's colorblind to that kind of stuff. And I think that's a wonderful sort of perspective to have. So now with all of your free time, of course, uh, <laughs> yes. you're playing music and writing a book. Yeah. <laughs> as if he doesn't have enough jobs. Oh, yeah, enough jobs. Mm -hmm. Which do you reach for first when you think, all right, the day is almost done. I got a little little juice left. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, music was part of, you know, I did, you know, that EP for the, my recovery. Also wrote a song for my daughter. Anything to find ways to heal. You know, music is very healing. It's, yeah. it's yeah. very emotional and uh, it's very unifying. And it's like a, it's, it's like a diary for me. So music has very always been very important to me that way, very personal. Um, and I was able and brave enough to kind of share it, um, which is a little harrowing for me, but I'm glad I did it. Mm -hmm. And then the book is about the uh, same type of journey. It's about sort of the, the life and death and everything learned in the recovery. What would you say to teenage Jeremy, who has these aspirations of being in, in Hollywood, yeah. being an actor, yeah. knowing what you have been through? What would you say to that young man? Uh, um, trust your instincts. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, hopefully nothing changes, you know? That's the right hope. Because yeah. I have zero regrets. And that was also confirmed upon, you know, the accident and death. It's like, yeah, I, I was in on my deathbed and I, I have zero regrets. Wow. Zero regrets. What a, wow. What a great wow. thing. Like, I, I always believed that, yes. but now it's the confirmation of that. The face and death. that is a very different thing. Yeah, the face death and be involved in that, right? Is, and then you double down on like, now you know, now I know I don't have any regrets. That's, that's yeah. most people's yeah. biggest fear. Right, yes. exactly. Is to have regrets on their yeah, deathbed. Yeah. So yeah. these wonderful, these wonderful sort of gifts that were bestowed onto me because of this accident were our, I'll, I'll never have a bad day for the rest of my life. Hmm. It's like, I get that. Yes. Mm. Yeah, that's, that, that's very you know powerful. powerful. You, you have to get, I don't recommend you know, getting tested to your no, limits. I like that. So, you know, I, go I have like a bad that. day, right? Yes. I don't recommend doing what I did. Yeah. No, I know. But, but I'm going to take something positive out of this somehow, somewhere. I'm, I'm curious about Ava, because last time you were here, you were talking about driving her to school. It was a costume day or something. Yeah. You were debating about whether you were going to Oh, right. That's right. Uh, no, yeah, I remember that. Hawkeye. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> and and how your relationship has changed and how instrumental she must have been with getting you through this. Yeah, yeah, she's my she's my life force, man. She yeah. uh and there's I got back from on from happened on January 1st, January 14th or the 12th, whenever I got back home. Mm -hmm. My sister said Ava's here. I forgot that I had had a daughter. That's wow. how messed up I was, right? Yeah. And then seeing her, you wow. know, she was, uh, I'd never seen my daughter scared or uh, anything. And I was laying there pretty busted up and uh, she told me she was afraid. And I said, look, you have to wait for me. These are just bones. Uh, they're all gonna heal pretty quickly and you never have to worry. So everything I did was to show off or prove to her that I was getting better each week. She'd come on the weekends and I'd get through physical therapy and do mm. whatever I could possibly do. And she was my driving force. I wasn't focused on my pain. I wasn't focused on anything that I was going through. I had to do it and heal my daughter. Mm -hmm. I relieved myself of whatever I had to go through. Yeah. And like, the more I healed, I'd heal my mother, my poor nephew who had to hold my arm, yes, yes. watch me die on the ice, right? Yeah. I get it, the better I get, the better they get. Mm. 
So they were, they were my fuel to get better so fast. They had so much to love. Now, I don't know if, I, I had a lot of people to love, right? And yes. that that's, was a huge part of my fuel to get through. I didn't have to focus on me at all. Right? Yeah. Jeremy, awesome. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. It's great. Yeah, to be I'm glad to be here, man. I really appreciate you guys. Yes, we're yeah. cheering you on.